Playing against the same OP champion game after game without an answer other than to ban them can get a little tilting. To combat this, we'll be setting you guys up with the absolute best counter to the most played champions for every role in patch 11.5. You'll go from despising that OP pick to praying the enemy team locks it in. Who's the most annoying matchup for you personally? There's so many great choices to this one, so be sure to chime in and leave your pick down in the comments below. For all your meta content needs to stay completely up to date for every patch, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already. So without any further ado, let's get into breaking down these counters. Gnar currently holds the highest play rate for any top laner as he's hitting the rift in about 10% of games. This peaks super hard once you reach Master Plus as it's around 20%. Our number one counter recommendation for you to take down the annoying Yordle is Silas. Gnar struggles against most champions who have strong mobility due to how vulnerable he is when in ranged form. If you're able to get right on top of Gnar, then the range advantage he has doesn't matter, which is why Silas works so well. The lane really tilts in Silas's favor once he hits level 6. Gnar's ultimate is one of the best for Silas to steal in the game, and he can be so insanely impactful in the 1v1 or especially in teamfights. Steal the Gnar ultimate and it's a guaranteed teamfight win if you got flash available and the enemy team is standing near a wall. I bet most of you didn't even know Gnar Ultimate has a 100% AP ratio on it, so Silas receives ludicrous value from not only the CC, but also the damage. Once you complete Everfrost and steal the Gnar Ultimate, there's really nothing Gnar can do to beat you in a duel. The first few levels are Gnar favored though, so don't play overly aggressive and get yourself killed before you hit your spike. Once you've got level 3 with Silas and have both mobility spells, this is to where you can start looking for trades. Since Silas is such an amazing counter to another OP meta pick in Malphite, we'd highly recommend you add him as a pocket pick for 11.5. Quickly running down the build, rush Everfrost into Cosmic Drive and then Zhanya's. Take fleet footwork to help you sustain the early game combined with Inspiration Secondary to enhance that sustain even further. All ranks combined, Garen is the most played top laner in the entire game, with over a 10% average play rate. So many of Garen's previous weaknesses have been eliminated in Season 11 with the introduction of Stridebreaker. The fact that Garen now has a low cooldown dash available makes it a lot harder to kite him and has turned him into a pretty OP pick. To counter the might of Demacia, you need someone with good mobility and kiting power, and in that case there's very few better than Vayne. The short cooldown dash on Vayne Q coupled with the knockback from Condemn and stealth from ult give her amazing tools to keep Garen away. It's really important to just play off when your E is available. When it's down is the window Garen will be looking to all in, so you need to be playing more respectfully and sitting further back until it comes off CD. As long as you've got E, then aggressively poke away at Garen whenever he's trying to CS, looking for Silver Bolt and PTA procs to chunk him out. By achieving this, you honestly don't even need to be a mechanical god to make Vayne top work. You'll make every Garen player rethink their decision of locking in the champ. Since you'll likely have push priority early on, make sure to ward accordingly as dying to jungle ganks are really the only way for you to lose the matchup. Once you reach Kraken Slayer, the double true damage proc will allow you to melt away at Garen's HP bar with ease. Pick up Phantom Dancer second and then Infinity Edge third. Press the attack is Vayne's best keystone with Domination Secondary running Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter. Udyr's held over a 10% play rate over the past few patches now, and even though we expect this to drop due to his nerfs, it won't drop far enough so that you won't need a good counter. Ivern's our recommended counter to Udyr for a bunch of different reasons. Udyr's main weakness lies in not having a dash, and therefore being kited by heavy CC. Ivern's kit provides amazing disruption with the stun from Q, slow from E, and knock up from Daisy. This makes it so much more difficult for Udyr to maneuver in teamfights. If you can prevent Udyr from reaching his targets, then the champion has very little to offer, which is what Ivern does so well. Not only the heavy disruption, but the short cooldown shield and healing from Moonstone really take away from so much of Udyr's damage. Of course, in a straight up 1v1, Ivern is not likely to beat Udyr. However, during teamfights and skirmishes, Ivern can be so much more useful and shut Udyr down. On Staff of Flowing Water completion, the extra move speed you give teammates when shielding them is so nice to help kite away from Udyr as well. Pick up Ardent 3rd in most games or Chemtech Putrefire if you need the healing reduction. Summon Airy is Ivern's best keystone, combined with Sorcery Secondary, taking Futures Market and Cosmic Insight. Hecarim is by far the most played jungler, with an average 14% play rate. If you've been using your ban on someone else, then it's so vital to have a good counter to Hec. Poppy is the best counter to Hecarim, and one of the most undervalued junglers in general for 11.5. Poppy provides you with everything needed to shut down the Shadows of War. 
Since Poppy W stops dash abilities, it makes it so difficult for Hecarim to ever E onto you. So much of Hecarim's initial burst comes from his E damage, therefore Poppy really limits his 1v1 ability. During team fights, if you're able to sit on top of your carries with W available, then it makes it impossible for Hecarim to fully commit onto the back line. On top of this, Poppy E and Ultimate provide amazing peel tools to shut down Hecarim even harder. The knockback or stun from Poppy E allows you to pin Hecarim or push him away from your carries. Poppy Ultimate can force him out of the fight completely. All in all, there are just so many tools in Poppy's kit that if played well, can void Hecarim completely useless. The build to run on your Poppy jungle is a Divine Sunderer rush into Dead Man's Plate and then Force of Nature or Thorn Mail 3rd. Grab Dark Harvest for your Keystone and dip into Sorcery Secondary taking Celerity and Water Walking. Moving on to mid lane now, Zed's always one of the most picked champions, so learning Diana for the matchup will do you wonders. Zed is picked on around 11% of games at the moment, which is only second to Yone and Yasuo who we'll cover next. Diana's a really amazing pick for this lane due to her ability to beat Zed early on and then render him completely useless in the mid game on Zanya's completion. It's so difficult for Zed to obtain an early lead in this matchup as Diana does such a great job at neutralizing him. The shield from Diana W allows her to win out on early trades and helps to limit Zed's burst. Grab an early Seeker's Arm Guard and stacking armor from the item will really restrict any ability for Zed to kill you. If Zed can't amass a lead early on, come mid game team fights, Diana will be of much more use. Knight Harvester HP combined with the armor and stasis from Zanya's turn Diana into a mini mage tank. It's game over for Zed once you complete that Zanya's, as you can start taking over in the side lane and 1v1. Pick up Lich Bane 3rd to provide an extra pop of burst. In runes, you'll take Electrocute for the Keystone and then Resolve Secondary to counter Zed even harder. Shield Bash gives you a little bonus armor, and then Bone Plating nullifies burst, so both options are perfect for the Zed matchup. Yasuo and Yone continue to blow everyone out of the water when it comes to champion play rate. Both are currently sitting at above 12%. Instead of banning them out though, look to add Lissandra to your champion pool and make them suffer. Both champions tend to thrive in matchups where they can use their mobility to outplay skill shots or get in and out of fights. The point and click CC from List W and Alt completely shuts down any of these shenanigans. With Everfrost buffed in 11.4, the item performs so well on Lissandra and makes it even more impossible for Yaz and Yone to play teamfights. When you combine List CC with Everfrost Root, the maximum chain can last 4.5 seconds in a mid-game fight, which gives you more than plenty of time to burst them out. This isn't even the half of it though, as Lissandra can pick up early Seekers, sit on it till mid-game, eventually complete Zanyas, and then just laugh at Yasuo or Yone as they struggle towards their 0 and 10 power spike. Overall, the ability for List to easily lock down Yas and Yone and prevent them from being able to abuse their mobility makes her the perfect counter. For the build, pick up an early Seekers, complete Everfrost into Zanyas, and then Robodons. Run Electrocute as the keystone along with Sorcery Secondary, opting for Mana Flow Band and Transcendence. Despite the nerfs, Kai'Sa continues to be played in 32% of games. Jinx will be our top counter recommendation, so you can start stealing elo from those Kai'Sa players. The first reason why Jinx can do so well in this matchup is because of the range discrepancy. With Fishbones, Jinx auto range clocks in at 625 level 1 and then 725 once you max Q out. Kai'Sa auto range is 525, so Jinx has a nice advantage here at being able to harass Kai'Sa from range to where she can't retaliate. Not only do you outrange Kai'Sa with your basic attack, but Jinx W and ult help to counter Kai'Sa's shorter range even harder. If you pair Jinx with any aggressive support, then it's so difficult for Kai'Sa to play laning phase. If Kai'Sa is ever tagged by something like a Thresh hook, then Jinx just follows with chompers to chain the CC, and Kai'Sa won't be able to return fire at all. Jinx in general is one of the strongest ADCs of the patch as we included her in our top 10 solo carry champs video. The fact she's in a strong state and also does well into Kai'Sa should make it a no brainer to add her to your champ pool. The build for Jinx is Kraken or Gale Force Rush into Hurricane and Infinity Edge. Take Conqueror for your Keystone with Domination Secondary, running Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter. The next ADC with an extremely high play rate is Ezreal. He's picked in over 20% of games right now. An amazing counter you can use to invalidate Ez is Sivir. The pushing power of Sivir is very hard for Ezreal to match, and therefore you'll be able to pin him under tower all game and poke him out with Q. It's really easy to sustain mana in this matchup as Sivir, since Ezreal Q is pretty simple to time with spell shield. 
This makes Ezreal poking with Q counterproductive a lot of the time, and will just allow Sivir to continue pushing while bullying Ez out. The early game is just so heavily tilted in Sivir's favor, to the point where Ezreal will be coin flipping, hoping his mid and top are there to bail him out. Sivir's perma push will always give you first move, and way more influence on how the game unravels. On man immune completion, Sivir can spam out Q for poke and beat Ezreal at his own game. Pick up Duskblade second and then Cyril does grudge third. Dark Harvest will be your keystone, with Sorcery Secondary running Mana Flow, Band, and Transcendence. Thresh is the best support in 11.5, and his play rate really shows it. Thresh is picked on average 15% of the time, and this even rises to over 20% for Diamond and above. Even though Rel has been nerfed slightly in 11.5, she's still our go-to option for shutting down the Chain Warden. With a Rel in the game, Thresh always has to think twice about committing when his hook lands. The peel Rel provides gives her the ability to stomp on aggressive melee supports if they overreach. Rel, W, E, and Ultimate offer elite lockdown and chain CC to keep her carry safe from dive champions. The fact Rel E also provides her ADC with bonus resists makes it even more difficult for aggressive supports to find kills from all ends. Rel's ban rate should drop a pretty good amount for 11.5, even though her power level will remain much the same, so picking her up will be even easier. She's not only strong against Thresh, but other meta picks like Leona, Alistair, and Nautilus, which means having her in your champ pool will offer great value. The best build for Rel is Chemtank Rush into Zeke's and then Knight's Vow. Chemtank provides really nice engage, so combined with her innate peel power makes Rel so well-rounded. Aftershock is Rel's best keystone, combined with Hex Flash and Cosmic Insight from the Inspiration Tree. And then to round everything out, let's take a look at a counter for the purple Yordle. Lulu is played in over 10% of games, so you'll want to be using Blitz to grab some free elo. Lulu aside, squishy meta supports in general like Seraphine and Senna are free real estate for Blitz. He's all around just a great counter to most of the enchanters being played. Early on in lane, one hook on a squishy support is a guaranteed flash, if not a kill, every time. Once you get a lead early on, it's a fire sale from then on out, as you can just run right up to Lulu with Mobies and W, knock her up with E, throw a hook out, and pick up kill after kill. It's impossible for someone like Lulu to match Blitz's roam power, so you'll have the ability to hard win your lane while also influencing the rest of the map. Lulu actually performs well into most other aggressive supports, since she can polymorph them as they try to engage. This doesn't apply to Blitz though, as his hook is a long range pick tool, meaning he doesn't need to be in polymorph range to find those kills. If you're unaware, Blitz ultimate is a shield breaker, so this makes a matchup like Lulu even easier to exploit, as you render one of her defensive abilities completely useless. Your build on Blitz should be a Shirelia's Rush, into Zeke's and then a Knight's Vow. Shirelia's is just so insane since it allows Blitz to find picks so effortlessly and adds a nice bit of burst from the AP too. Take Aftershock along with Inspiration for secondary running Hex, Flash, and Biscuits. Alright guys, now that you're up to date with all the best counters to the OP picks, stop losing to them and start picking up some free wins. For all your meta content needs, this is the place to be, so don't forget to drop a sub and turn on those notifications if you haven't already. We appreciate you taking the time, good luck in 11.5, and we'll see you in the next one.